there's a ton of confusion out there about how solar panels actually work, what you can actually power with them, how they work with your RV, and how they work with your portable electronics, and also in conjunction with these battery packs that are becoming so popular today. There's so many myths about what solar panels can do for you, and there's also so many people spending money on stuff that they don't need to just to charge up their RV batteries. So what we're gonna cover briefly today, and we're gonna get right into it, is what do solar panels do for you? What do they not do for you? How do they work? What are the different options for different types of panels for not just folding versus conventional panels, but also should you mount them on your RV or not? And also how they work with these portable electronic devices, laptops, fridges, and things like that. So with the intro out of the way, let's just go ahead, jump in and get started. So what can solar panels do for you with your situation? So what they can do is they can keep your RV or travel trailer batteries trickle charged. What they can also do is help keep your little portable power stations charged up. What solar panels cannot do is directly power devices that use AC power, something like a microwave or an air conditioner. However, if they're used in conjunction with a power inverter, an energy storage system, something like this portable battery pack, or the batteries and inverter system in your trailer, they can be used to help charge the batteries as those batteries run through an inverter and then power AC devices but it is incorrect to say that you can put out some solar panels and that is running your air conditioner or your microwave or other hydro items. That's simply incorrect. The amount of amperage, the amount of watts that the panels put out, unless you're talking about a tremendous array of solar panels that would take up this whole driveway, it's simply not enough power to power those hydro devices. So what's gonna be happening is you're gonna be putting some trickle charge back into your batteries with the panels, but then coming out of the batteries through an inverter is gonna be a huge amount of power to power those devices. So if you try doing that, you're gonna run your batteries dry really quickly. Okay, so let's first talk about what are some of your different options for installation and different types of panels. So some RVs and travel trailers will come from the factory with an option where you can get solar panels on the roof. So let's cover that real briefly. The upside of having solar panels on your vehicle or your RV already is that you get to camp and they're already up there, they're already wired into the system and they're good to go and they're always charging the batteries. The downside to that is that if you park your RV or travel trailer in the shade, which you're probably likely to do if you can because it's usually hot, then you're not gonna be getting uh, power on those solar panels. The other downside to mounting them permanently on your roof is that you have to drill into your roof of your van or your RV or your trailer, and that is gonna create potential leaks and potential structural concerns down the line. So you've also got these standalone panels that you have to get out and set up like we've got here. So here I've got the Harbor Freight panels, which I reviewed last year, which I no longer like. And I've also got this uh, folding solar panel system, which I'll talk about in a minute, which folds up into something like a large iPad, although a little bit heavier, and allows you to take your solar panels everywhere, and it's just very convenient. So the advantage to these standalone panels is that you can position them just like they are right now in the sun. So if they had been on the top of my trailer, because my trailer's in the shade, I'd be getting no power. But since I can move them out here in the sun, I can get some nice watts coming out of them, and I can run that power back to my RV or whatever I want to power. Now the downside to some of these portable panels is that there's more setup involved. You have to carry them in your vehicle and you have to get out, set them up, run some wires and connect things up. So it's a little bit more work in that regard. But personally, I find the ability to position them into the sun to get my charging that I need outweighs, you know, the cons of having to set it up. So that's just my two cents. Another thing you're gonna to have to understand and that you're gonna to have to buy if you have solar panels is you're gonna need some way to control the electricity coming in from the panels going into your RV or your other electronic devices. You simply do not hook up a solar panel directly to an electronic device, it doesn't work. The volts simply aren't right and there's no way for it to control the charging. So you have to go through a charge controller. Now, a lot of these portable power stations, including this one I have, which is a Massimo unit that I bought at Costco, but the Jackeries also have it and a lot of them have it, they have a charge controller built in, which is great. On your RV or travel trailer, most likely, unless you've got the solar option from the factory, you don't have a charge controller built in. And the reason that's important is that you're gonna to have to then install a charge controller in between your solar panels and the batteries of your coach. So that's gonna be a little bit extra work on that part. Charge controllers start anywhere from like 30 bucks for a cheap controller like the crappy one I have, all the way up to hundreds of dollars for fancier MPPT controllers that basically are more advanced and allow you to be more efficient with the use of your solar panels. 
Okay, so let's briefly talk about these panels I have sitting here and how these work in the real world. So these are the Harbor Freight panels. They're rated at 25 watts each for a total of 100 watts. The downside to these is they're heavy, they're bulky, they take up a lot of room, and they're just a general pain in the butt, and I'm not using them anymore. Now, let's talk quickly about rating. So I mentioned that they're 100 watts. Well, are you gonna get 100 watts out of them? No, it's impossible because they're rated at uh, efficiency sort of on paper, but in reality, because of losses of the surface of the panels and going through the wiring and things like that, you, you're gonna lose uh, current and there's no way for it to deliver 100 watts. So out of these panels, you might see 60, 65 watts on a good day. So now let's talk about this one. This is a folding solar panel. It doesn't really matter what brand it is because there's different brands out there, but this happens to be a Rock Pals, which I got from Amazon, and I'm very happy with it. So the nice thing about this is that it folds up. Look at this. Look how portable this is. And these wires tuck into this pouch here. And then you can just carry it wherever you need to go, put it in your van, take it with you camping, take it with you to the beach, uh, wherever you might want to go that you want to trickle charge one of these power stations or power up your camper van or whatever it might be. So I'm using this to power the travel trailer when we're boondock camping, when we have no hookups. I'm also using it uh, to hook up to my power station and I use my power station to charge laptops, camera batteries, and this portable fridge that I have. And we'll talk about the fridge and that stuff in another video. Um, the fridges usually take around in high mode, maybe 50 watts or so, 60 watts, depending on what size you have. In an eco mode, maybe around 30 watts. So on a sunny day like this, a panel system like this will be able to, at least during the daylight hours, be able to keep enough power going into the battery um, for the fridge to stay running without draining your battery. Of course, at nighttime, you're gonna be draining your battery down because you don't have sunlight. So how do these things work in practice? Well, for these Harbor Freight panels, you get this giant bird's nest of wires, which is a big pain in the butt. And you have to connect all these and you basically plug it into your charge controller in your trailer. And then it'll show you kind of how much voltage is going into your trailer. If you have a more advanced charge controller, you can see, you know, the flow of your current and things like that. But let's put that out of the way for now because I don't know what I'm gonna do with these panels anymore. Probably give them away. Um, let's look at this folding solar panel from Rock Pals. And by the way, I'm not affiliated with this company. They didn't send me this to test. I actually bought these on my own because I've been looking for a solution like this. So they simply unfold like this. Go ahead and set them down here in the sun. They have little stands on the back. And that's essentially the setup. You get the wire coming out of it here. Now in order to plug it into my power station, I had to buy a little adapter cable because of course the power station uses a slightly different um, plug for the DC input. So I've got the panel plugged into the input on the battery pack. Now make sure if you have one of these power stations that you have a charge controller that is solar ready and has a charge controller built into it because there's a few of them out there that don't and you could potentially cause problems. So you have this plugged in and now it'll give you on my display, it tells me uh, you know, how much input, it cycles through the display and tells me how much input wattage I'm getting. And of course that changes based on how much sunlight there is at the moment. And then I have my portable fridge here plugged into the output. So basically we're maintaining the power flow here. So that's how that works. Also, if you needed to just to charge this up, of course you could just take up the fridge or whatever you have plugged in and just let the energy charge up the battery, which will probably take uh, the better part of a whole day, depending on how big your battery pack is. So those are kind of the different options for the panels and generally how they work. Now you might be asking, well, how do I know how much solar I need? How many watts do I need? So it's common for these types of setups to be around 100 watts or so. Um, but how do you know how much you need? Well, there's a few things you have to consider and you're gonna have to go figure this out on your own because I can't, every individual situation is different. But if you're just trying to charge things like laptops, maybe run a portable fridge, or just keep your RV batteries charged just to run things like your fans, uh, the fridge in your RV, uh, maybe the te television in your RV, then 100 watts, if on a good sunny day, is probably gonna put enough power back into your batteries to keep things from going flat every night, right? So you're gonna have to watch your usage. Now where you get into trouble is where you get into these larger RVs and these people who are running uh, these huge banks of batteries. So depending on how much battery storage capacity you have and also the loads you're pulling off of it. So if you're trying to have a huge bank of lithium batteries, which costs thousands of dollars, just so you can run like an air conditioner or a microwave when you're boondocking off the grid, then you would need a lot more than 100 watts, right? Because 
let's say you get 70 watts out of it on the best day, even charging all day long in the sunlight in the summer, um, you know, a microwave and an air conditioner, those things use thousands of watts. So to make up for using your air conditioner at 1,000 watts for an hour, you'd have to run a 100 watt panel at 10 hours. But since you're not getting 100 watts, it'd be more like 15 hours. So you get the idea. Um, solar panels are very inefficient in their use of space and generating electricity. It's just the basics of it, and that's why solar panels are not going to save the world. Uh, but they are useful uh, for camping, for charging things up, and providing a modest amount of power uh, that comes from the sun, although they're not without their downsides. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring out the generator and at least briefly talk about how the generator fits into this equation and why most likely you still need a gas powered generator even if you have solar panels. So a lot of people have this sort of misguided belief that somehow solar panels replace uh, generators that run on gas or diesel. Well, that really isn't true. So let's say it puts out 1500 watts. So I fire it up, it uses gas, and I immediately have 1500 watts that I can use and that will run an air conditioner or microwave, whereas the solar panel simply won't. Um, this will also allow me to charge my batteries as well and power anything I want. Of course, the downside is it's running on gas and it makes a little bit of noise, although these suitcase generators, these inverter generators, are very, very quiet. So if you think you're going to replace a generator with solar panels, um, that's most likely not going to happen because all the solar I have here together is probably putting out maybe around 100 watts. But if I fire this up, I'm getting you know, between 1500 and 2000 watts from this this thing right here. So that's the difference there. So you're probably still gonna need a generator to power higher draw items. Um, but solar panels are great because they're quiet and you can trickle charge your batteries. The other good thing about the generators is that they have AC power uh, coming from it. So the engine inside spins and it creates electricity, but they have an inverter in them and they, they convert the power. So you have uh, AC outlets here, which you don't get from a solar panel. Uh, you can buy those battery packs, but again, that's only 300 watt hours right there. So that can barely do put out any power at all compared to this thing. So you can plug an electrical device, uh, let's say a coffee pot, a microwave, uh, a fridge or whatever directly into this. So this can be more useful for emergency power backup, um, anything that you might think of. Solar panels are a lot more difficult because you'd have to buy a ton of batteries and you'd have to invest in an expensive inverter system to make that all work. I know this can be confusing, so to put this in a way you can understand, when I fill this with gasoline, this generator will run for probably around eight hours at a pretty high load. So let's say 1500 watts. So eight hours times 1500 watts is what? So that comes out to 12,000 watt hours of energy in the suitcase generator stored right here with the gasoline in it. So compare that to this little power station here. So this power station, this happens to be a 300, but you can get these in 500 or 1000 uh, watt uh, equivalents. Um, so this only has 300 watt hours compared to 12,000 in this. Now you can buy these generators, the, the, a generator just like this at Costco for 450 bucks, which is a friggin' bargain and you should buy one if you don't have one. Um, they sell under a different name, but they use a Japanese engine. These things are a terrible value. They're not a good value at all because again, this was like $300 for only 300 watt hours of power. But this you can buy $450 for 12,000 watt hours of power with one gas tank. And of course you can refill the gas tank. So something like the Jackery 1000 is actually not a very good deal at all. Um, yes, it is quiet and you're not running a generator, but if you look at actually how much energy you're getting or how much energy storage you're getting for your dollar, it's very, very terrible in comparison to an actual gasoline generator. So I hope that makes sense. So I sincerely hope this video has been useful in some way for you. Please give me feedback on how I'm doing, what you'd like for future videos, what I could improve about videos like this. Uh, any comments and questions you have, put them down below. I do go through and respond to pretty much all the comments on my YouTube channel, which is a rare thing in the YouTube world. So let me know. Uh, we can figure this out together and let me know what kind of situations you have. How are you using solar panels? How are you using these battery packs? How are you using your generators? And what issues have you come up with? Or what questions do you have for the community? So let me know down below. Thanks again for watching. You can support me on Patreon. You can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. Those all help the algorithm and all help these videos get out to people so they can help them uh, with their needs. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.